My name is Peter Hurst. It's my privilege uh, to be here to introduce our next keynote speaker, Dr. Jeannie Ross, uh, who is going to speak on articulating your digital vision. Now, I'm the Dean for Executive Education at MIT Sloan School, and could I just say, how great is this event? Congratulations to the organizing committee. Yeah, let's give a big hand. <laughs> the organizing committee, our Boston Alumni Association, and all of you for being here and making this the most important and valuable, I would argue, convening of CIOs uh, anywhere. You all know, I think, Dr. Jeannie Ross, uh, as one of the world's most thoughtful and insightful researchers uh, and authors on the opportunities and challenges that you all face uh, as CIOs, whether it's enterprise architecture, uh, digital business strategy, uh, or any other number of topics that Jeannie has researched uh, and written prolifically about. She also teaches powerfully uh, in our exec ed programs at the Sloan School, including helping companies as diverse as, in industries as diverse as Semex uh, or ANZ Bank, to name just a couple, uh, hundreds of leaders in digital strategy, formulation, and execution that actually transform those organizations. And we've all been talking about transformation a lot today. Uh, Jeannie is a great expert in that subject. So it's really uh, my pleasure and my honor uh, to invite uh, to the stage Dr. Zini Ross, the Director uh, and uh, Principal Research Scientist in MIT Center for, In Center for Information Systems Research. Dr. Zini Ross. Thank you, Peter. Well, thank you. It is a thrill to be here and to have this opportunity to share the research we've been doing at MIT CISR on digital transformation. I am particularly passionate about enterprise architecture. So my intention was to share with you how we're going to design for digital. But with my colleagues who are listed on the, on the slide here, what we've learned that there's actually a challenge before we get to designing for digital, and that is about reaching consensus about what digital even means what it is to have a digital vision so that we can design ourselves to execute that vision. So what I want to share with you instead today is digital. What does it mean? How do we get a vision? How do we go forward from here? Before I do that, let me thank our global uh, patrons and sponsors. We are nothing without you, and it is so wonderful to work with you. Let me explain what I think is happening. We are being bombarded by technologies. Social, mobile, analytics, cloud, internet of things. I call this smack it. And I call it smack it because that's the way it feels. We are being bombarded by these technologies and then we just get knocked around trying to take advantage of them. And it doesn't stop with these five. This is the start. Now we've got cognitive and blockchain and biometrics and the procession keeps going, right? So, we at Scissor studied each of these technologies as they appeared on the scene. And with each new technology, we actually came to the same conclusion. Calm down about the hype, because it turns out that to get value from this technology, you need to first and foremost be a well-run company. Take for advantage, for adva uh, example, uh, the, the big data and analytics piece, right? You, you go out, you can collect data, no question. You can analyze it, you bet, you can get insights. But if you're not well run, you can't take advantage of that. So skip it. Now, we said that basically about all these technologies, and then we started studying things a little more closely, and we went, wait, 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 something's happening here. And we took a step back and we thought, here's what's happening. What we said before isn't untrue, but there's one other truth we ought to be aware of. And that is the convergence of these technologies is fundamentally changing how business is done. It is changing the opportunities for our customer value propositions. And if we don't get our heads around that, we're going to continue to compete as if we were living in the 20th century while other companies are living in the 21st. So what we're trying to avoid, we used to think about avoiding the Kodak moment, right? Not being aware that some new product was coming along. Not anymore. Now we worry about our Uber moment. 
The Uber moment is the day we realize we didn't take advantage of these technologies and somebody else came along and did so. So taxi companies understood that they could give rides. Uber understood that in a digital economy, they could give rides. They could tell you who your driver was, when the driver was arriving, how much it would cost, when you'd get to your destination, and they could take out all hassles with payment. That's because they understood the possibilities of digital technology. When we understand those tech, that, uh, what technologies can do for us, we start to define a digital vision. I would argue that a digital vision takes us from the 20th century to the 21st, because what it does is it fundamentally changes what we have been doing. Look at the role of the CIO until the last, say, five years. Enable business strategy, right? Anybody here ever try to enable business strategy? That was our job, right? Well, it's not enough anymore. You enable business strategy, and all you're enabling your company to do is what it's always done. Going forward, we have to inspire our company with technology, not just enable it. And when we talk about inspire, what we're inspiring is new value propositions, new sources of revenue. If we aren't there, we're not digital. So what does it mean? Well, what we need to get our head around are these new capabilities. Number one, we're talking about ubiquitous data. It used to be OK to say, I'm going to give my customer a great product, but there's some things I don't know about my customer or about how they use this product or other things going on in the world. That was acceptable. Not today, because data is ubiquitous. If you don't know something, find out. And what's worse is that we have unlimited connectivity, the second capability. So not only can we know, we can know now. We can be totally connected through sensors, through mobility. There's no reason to not know, and there's no reason to not know now. So anything that created bottlenecks or uncertainty or delays kind of goes away. And our job in our value propositions is to recognize how we cash in on that new capability. Capitalizing on, on, on that is the whole massive processing capability here, which really just makes this data and this con connectivity more real. Okay? So these are the capabilities that we have. We need to be inspired by those capabilities to go beyond who we were. Now, the thing that's going to trip us up, I believe, is that we have been going through transformations for some time. We've been studying these transformations at MIT. And the interesting thing is, these things kind of started in the late 90s. And we were putting in SAP and uh, CRMs and you know, all that kind of stuff to kind of clean up our systems and make our companies more efficient and more effective and improve the customer experience. All of this is great stuff. And it was a transformation because it introduced some integration and standardization that we'd never had. It imposed discipline on our processes. It created access to master data and visibility into our transactions. This was really valuable stuff. And the companies that did this well became much more profitable. We actually have data to support that. But here's the problem. We've been doing this since, last, since the late 1990s. And the thing we've learned in our research is that only 28% of big old companies have actually built a capability now. We call it the operational backbone, your disciplined core processes and transaction processes that enable you to be efficient, cost effective, get access to your data. 28%. Do you know what this means? Only 28% of our companies are ready to become digital. This is not digital. This is a transformation. It's not digital. Once we get digitized so we're efficient, then we get to become digital. But that's about our revenue streams. That's about offering new value propositions. That's about rapid innovation around our products and services. So it's a totally different phenomenon. And we need that digitization so that we don't have to spend all our time fixing things that are broken and that are hard to do, so we can focus management attention on our new offerings, not on our old products and services and, and organizational processes.
So this is our challenge. We, are, we should be done with digitizing. If we're not, we have to hurry up. And then we have to start to imagine what it will be to be digital. Now, to do that, let me just clarify for you by providing a couple of examples. I'll start with Amazon. You're going to think that they cheat because they were born digital, but I would disagree. They were born in 1994, and I would argue that there were no digital technologies in 1994, so they qualify. The interesting thing about uh, Amazon is it was a book retailer, and we've now forgotten that, right? It was born as a book retailer, and it's all it was doing until it was inspired by technology. It looked at social, it said, let's do book reviews. It looked at analytics, it said, let's get people to tell us what they think about things and start analyzing that feedback. They, it looked at uh, mobile, it said, why don't we make all this easier? Let's set up these shopping carts and make things really easy for everybody. And then it looked at AI and it said, and we can just keep making things easier and easier and easier. They moved from being a book retailer to being a provider of personal convenience. You know they can now enter your house to drop off your package. Just imagine we shouldn't have to wait very long before they offer to make us dinner. And that is, for me, personal convenience. So, but the thing is, you don't have to be born in 1994 to make this real. Schneider Electric is over 100 years old. Schneider Electric has been a manufacturer and distributor of electrical equipment for over 100 years. And in doing that, it, it was soup to nuts. You know, it had the big transformers and circuit boards and switches and all that, and, and the wires and the electrical outlets at the, at the other end. And it was 170 companies. It offered everything. But over time, management said, why do we just dump this equipment on our customers? They are not professional energy managers. They just want good, cheap, reliable energy. We should make sure they get it. So let's take our equipment, let's connect it, let's get some data from it, let's feed insights back to them so they can get better value, lower risk around energy management. So Schneider has gone from this producer and distributor of equipment to the provider of intelligent energy management solutions. Now just be clear, this is still a tiny piece of their revenue stream, but it is critical and it is their future and it is where they're headed. Philips is doing the same thing. We used to know them as just an innovative product company. Well, they got so complex, they said, this is a crazy way to try to make money. Let's narrow it down. They've been selling off everything. They are down to healthcare. They are going to provide healthcare information to individuals so they can manage their own health, and they're going to provide it to healthcare providers so they can provide an integrated view and a better understanding of the customer's needs. So this is their vision of how they will be digital. Now, what happens with digital vision is it manifests itself, or in other words, you know you're there, when you are actually selling digital offerings, when you have moved beyond your traditional products and services, not in total, there's still a cash cow for you, you have moved into digital offerings. Now, what's a digital offering? Well, a digital offering is the confluence of a customer solution, which is data-enriched, software-enriched, technology-enriched, and a great experience. And you can come at it from either side. You can say, I'm going to engage with my customer. I'm going to understand what they need and want. And, or you can start from the other side and say, we have some really clever engineers, and they're going to come up with some great solutions. It doesn't matter where you start. You need both elements of this to actually create a digital offering. And then that is something you sell. You generate revenue from this. But it is a customer enriched, a, a data enriched, technology enriched, software enriched offering that has a great experience. If all you're doing is what you've always done and now you've added a customer app, I just want to make clear to you, you are not digital. Okay? So, unfortunately, this is not going to be easy. Coming up with the vision is hard. Actually delivering it is harder. So what I have here is the things we've been learning in our digitization transformation as we became operationally efficient. Uh, it was, as we built our operational backbone that gave us the data and the processes that made sure we could deliver. This is what we were supposed to be getting good at for the last 10, 15 years. If we are not, we have to narrow focus, we have to make it happen now. Because what's going to happen going forward is we keep this. We got all those process owners who are brilliant. We have underlying systems that help us integrate. We have processes that make sure things get done without any flaws. This is really important. 
but it's not enough. What we're going to do going forward is we're going to innovate new offerings. The good news is we don't have to do this big, or, or maybe that's bad news, because here's the problem. Big old companies like big initiatives. I'm going to put a lot of money in. I'm going to do something amazing. I'm going to announce it to the board. Turns out this is little. We have a big vision, and then we have a lot of experiments on what kind of offerings would people actually pay for. And as we see what they'll pay for, they take root. And we start to see them grow. And the next thing we know, it actually has become big. The reason we're so glad this is happening gradually is because we have to do things in an entirely different way. We need product owners when we're used to project owners. We need to think around these digital offerings and, comp and uh, develop components that we can configure into one offering for one customer that's a little different for the next customer. So we're creating components, software components, using new data in ways that we never could have imagined and don't have to imagine. We just keep moving forward. So what will happen is today, in every big company, and this includes the Schneiders and the Phillips, most people are operating in the red. Hopefully, we're feeling pretty proficient there. And now we're going to start pulling people over to the blue side, and we're going to learn how to do this. We're going to learn it gradually. We're going to get good at it. And then we are going to wake up someday and go, whoa, we have really made progress on this amazing digital journey. And I don't know that there's a different way to do this, but let me be clear that if you are not yet digitized, you are in trouble. You, you've, most of you heard Dave Gladhill and what they're doing at DBS. First, they digitized. Then they start becoming digital. And what you're going to see is more and more separation. You've got no time to waste here. You need to be digitized, and you need to be starting to experiment around digital. So this is where we're headed. Your vision is just a North Star. It's telling you the direction you are going, and you are headed out there not knowing that that's actually where you're going to end up. You may have to pivot as you find out what offerings take root and which ones don't. So as you begin this journey, think about Christopher Columbus. This is a man who thought he was going to become rich and famous by finding a new path to the Indies. He only got as far as uh, the Americas. But what happened when he got to the Americas is he found out he could become rich and famous just by cashing in there. So as you now set your digital vision, start going forward. Take, take note of what you see. And I believe you, too, will become rich and famous. Thank you very much.